you know, because as an ethicist, I was put off, you know, in my studies at the degree to which ethicists and moralizers, you know, sort of pontificate about the body, tell it what it should be without any knowledge of it at all. And I thought, that's just not right. We have to actually, if you want to do ethics of the body, you have to listen to the body. You have to understand the body. What does it, what, how would it inform our way of being in the world? If we weren't saying, do this, don't do that with regard to our bodies, what does biology have to say? Isn't biology a gift? You know, isn't this body a gift? Is there anything that's wrong with it? I don't think so. It, it's a gift. It's, it's perfect as it, as it is. And so I want to learn from it. You know, I want to be informed. And that goes for whether I'm an ethicist or a body worker. You know, if I, I don't want to be a bully as a body worker telling the body where it should be and what it ought to do. I'd rather understand the variations and the complexity and the sophisticated intelligence of the body so that maybe the job is not to keep telling the body, be this way, be that way, but to listen to what it's trying to say to you being exactly as it is. Maybe maybe it's, uh, it's our way of being with our bodies that needs to change more than our bodies. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about our, our theme, which is move better, feel better, I, don't th I think it goes way beyond uh, ethicists and people who work with uh, bodies uh, or Feldenkrais practitioners who work with movement. It goes to the individual. Mm -hmm. So like as an individual, you're saying something very significant about what it means to move better and feel better. And it has, has something to do with not, not being attached to some outside uh, abstract notion of what each of us is supposed to move like or feel like or be like. 